Let's make a Christmas card in Blender together. Start with a sphere. No, not that one. Every great sphere started as a cube. Just subdivide it with a smoothness of 1. Select the top 4 faces and make them into a circle. Using inset and extrude we can make the neck of the Christmas bowl. For the cup, let's start with a plane and extrude one of the edges to give it a little lip. Then, with proportional editing, we can round it off and make it a nice smooth shape. After that, just give it an array modifier and a simple deform to bend the whole thing into a circle. Make sure to set the right orientation and reset scale. Now we can apply everything. Clean up the mesh by merging double vertices and recalculating normals. Finally, let's set it in place and scale it to proportion. Don't forget to give it some thickness. Time to decorate. For some of the simple shapes, we can start with a ring of edges and separate them. With proportional editing, just give it a nice curve and then extrude for some thickness. To make sure things fit perfectly, subdivide once, then shrink wrap it to the surface of the bowl. I'm going to use a shell to give it some thickness too and then subdivide again. If you're getting any strange results, make sure all the normals are facing out and in the same direction. For the base material, let's just make a metal with slight roughness and give it a nice, rich color. The same goes for the cap and some of the ornaments. Only thing that I'm tweaking is the color and the roughness. For a glittery look, let's take a Voronoi texture and give it coordinates. Then plug it into the normals of our shader. From here on, it's just about tweaking the size of the Voronoi and the strength of the normal map until we get rid of the black spots in the material. Now that we have made a few decorations, let's put a scene together. In a new blend file, we can start with a plane and subdivide it a few times. Then, using sculpt mode, just shape it into a nice landscape for our Christmas bow to sit. Take your time in this step as it is shaping the overall composition of the shot. I also want to have some snow on the bow. Let's create a sphere that matches the bow and subdivide it. Then add a displace modifier and give it a texture. I'm using this hand painted image. Also, make sure to unwrap the sphere in a way that suits your texture and set the displacement coordinates to UV. Now, we're left with finding a nice angle for the snow and the right amount of displacement and mapping. To make things easier, I'll set up a camera. That way, I can figure out what will be in the shot and take some steps to optimize my scene. This is a close-up, so we will have to cram in a lot of detail to make it believable. Go into edit mode and select all the geometry that is outside the camera border, then just delete it. Ok, we are slowly getting there, but we need some more detail. First, I'll set up some additional displacement for the ground with a cloud texture. Tweak the settings until it looks good to you. To match the close-up look of snow, let's model a few small crystal-like shapes. Start with a box, move a few edges around, bevel others and make sure that you create at least two different shapes. After that, we have to make sure they are in a separate collection. Now on to the fun part. Let's add a particle system to the ground. Make sure it is set to here, then from the render rollout, we can select to scatter a collection and pick the one with the crystals we just made. Click the object rotation box and make sure your flakes are rotated 90 degrees on the Y axis. That way, we ensure they face the right direction as particles. Now it is all a matter of adjusting the scale, randomness, randomizing rotation and total count of the particles. Feel free to experiment with the settings as there isn't a right way, it all depends on your scene and the look you're going for. We can repeat the same process for the snow covering the Christmas bowl. At the moment, everything has a white diffuse shader and that isn't very convincing. For the snow, I'll create a white shader with lots of roughness and slide the subsurface scattering weight all the way to 1. For the flakes, we can use a principal BSDF with transmission set to 1 and again high roughness. It would have been better if we could go with the same shader as for the ground but Psychos creates strange artifacts where two objects with subsurface scattering intersect. Since the bow has been standing out in the snow, adding a roughness map will sell the cold weather so much better. Nothing too fancy, just a noise texture and adjust with a color ramp. 
We can also make use of the Voronoi texture again to make it look like vapor is crystallizing on the surface. Also, feel free to go back and forth in your scene. Just because we have something set up doesn't mean that would be its final look. In this case, I'm swapping the displacement texture for the ground with something more suitable as the cloud's procedural texture wasn't giving me the look I was going for. Having all that set, we can bring in some additional assets to arrange a nicer composition. I'll use a twig in the foreground as it gives a nice contrast to the shapes of the snow and the bowl. I'm rotating it and duplicating it around until I'm satisfied with the overall composition. Don't be afraid to edit the model, use soft selection if something doesn't fit well. To make some snow on the twigs, I'll just duplicate some faces, extrude them up, subdivide them to make them look smooth, after that we can make use of the flakes particles once again. For the background, I'll use a few pine trees, but honestly it could be anything as we're going to enable depth of field in the camera settings and everything in the background will become blurry. Now that the overall scene is assembled, we can move on to lighting. I want a nice contrast of warm and cold colors. For that, I'll make the environment a dark bluish color and will give the other lights a warm tone. This will be a rim light for the foreground in a warm tone, another spotlight to bring up the colors in the background and the fill light to the right of the bowl. There is nothing special here, just a matter of balancing the right intensity and color between the lights and the environment color. To make the whole thing believable, we still need more detail. In the background, I've added a distorted cube and scattered the box with an emission shader inside it. I've also randomized the color using a particle info node and a color ramp. For the foreground, we can make use of another particle system and make our snowflakes rain on top of our scene. You can set the start of the particle emission to a negative number so that you'll have some particles already flying at frame 1. On top of the depth of field, let's add some motion blur as well. Figuring out the shutter speed is just a matter of some trial and error. And we're ready to render. For compositing, I did some slight color corrections using crypto mat to make the snow and the twigs a bit brighter. After that, it's the noising time and adding some contrast with a color balance node. Here's something interesting. I used an ellipse mask to mix a darker and a brighter version of the image to create a slight vignette effect. A few final touches were added in GIMP. Mainly, I did not like some of the falling snowflakes, so I painted over them. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown and if you're watching this in December, happy holidays. Subscribe for more videos and thanks for watching.